I'm preaching to you from the stairs today because I want you to think about the upper room. The upper room. Without even opening our Bibles, I bet you can tell me what happened in the upper room. The upper room is where Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper. It's where the disciples hid after the crucifixion because they were so afraid. It's where the resurrected Christ appeared to the disciples, not once, but twice, because Thomas missed the first time. And remember, the upper room is where Thomas is invited to put his hands, his fingers, into the wounds of Christ, if he needs that to believe. The wounds of Christ. And then today, we have the disciples going to the upper room after Jesus ascends into heaven. And you'll notice that the mood in the upper room in today's gospel is so different than it was the night of the crucifixion. After the crucifixion, oh, the disciples were hiding for fear. But after the ascension, something has changed. A lot has changed. And the disciples are in the upper room together with um, some women disciples, with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with Jesus' brothers. They're all together, and they're constantly praying. It's a really different scene than being locked up for fear. And if you think about the visit where Jesus and Thomas talk about Jesus' wounds, well, that probably tells us that the day Jesus ascends into heaven, he is still bearing those wounds on his risen body. And for me, that's a really beautiful thought. That Jesus ascends into heaven, still bearing the wounds of his full humanity. Wounds that, of course, embody not just physical suffering, but all the emotional, spiritual, and interpersonal suffering that Jesus encountered. Jesus ascends into heaven to God's right hand on high, still bearing the wounds of his full humanity. The artist and writer Jan Richardson points out that Jesus' wounds match our wounds, and that our invitation in the Easter time is to match our wounds to those on the resurrected Christ, to see that Jesus understands our pain, understands our suffering, which of course is what our epistle from 1 Peter is saying today, that in our sufferings we find that we are not alone, instead we are so closely united with Christ in his suffering. And of course, this image of Jesus being taken up into heaven, bearing his wounds, bearing his full humanity, is indeed our hope for ourselves, for those we love and for this sick and wounded world, that we will be taken up to and by the God who cares for us, even as we bear our wounds, we bear our pain, we bear the marks of this finite human life. And so today, I rest in the words of our brother Peter. Peter who was there in the upper room every single time. Peter who bore his own bloody wounds at the end. I rest in the words of our brother, Peter, who says, cast all your anxieties on God because he cares for you. And then he says, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Peter's hope is our hope, just as Christ's wounds match our wounds. Peter's words remind us that our wounds do not define us. Indeed, human lives are hard. 
and they will always encounter pain and suffering in different sorts. But your wounds, your hardships, they never have the last word. God's intention for you is health, is wholeness, is restoration. When the disciples climbed the stairs to the upper room that night after the ascension and met with all their friends in prayer, the story was not over, not by a long shot. A new beginning was already in store and they just had to wait for it. The Holy Spirit was about to come upon them in new ways that they could have never imagined in their wildest prayers in the upper room that night. Everything that seems like an ending to us, to God, is a new beginning. And that is the good news.